Hello, good evening, and welcome back to the House Bonds World YouTube channel. I hope you're digging the new background. I'm going to be doing some different backgrounds for different genres of videos. Anyway, tonight I'm going to be doing a video that some of you may have been really waiting for. I know one of my subscribers, Joel M, has been asking for a while for this video. So I'm going to be doing the graphical settings for Project Cast 2 in the HP Reverb G2. The highest resolution headset currently on the consumer market. Now I'm going to kid you not guys. I really hope you appreciate the settings that I've conjured up because I feel like the last couple of days all I've done is bugger about with the HP Reverb G2. So I'm not going to make this video super, super long because I need to get to bed early at least one night this week. What I would say is when I've just gone through the graphical settings, I'm just going to put a race up in the background. And then I am going to narrate some commentary over the top of that because I really want you to get a picture and have an understanding of what quality you're getting from the HP Reverb G2 because it may not be what some of you are expecting, especially for a 4K headset. And I will try some through the lens footage, never done it before, so let's just see how that comes out. Let's get straight into the settings. Let's jump in straight into the virtual reality menu, and I've got gaze control turned off, super sampling I've got at 1.3, recenter view on boot and recenter view at start of race, I've got them turned off. The camera near clip plane I've got set to 0.07. I've always had that setting in Project Cars 2 VR. And it's just that when you're looking at the side of the car and that, it keeps the cockpit and everything of the car in where it should be. Then the important one, we go into performance. Now the resolution there, 3840 by 2160 at 60 hertz is my mirrored screen resolution don't worry about it saying 60 hertz because the headset will still render at 90 hertz if you've got the horsepower to do that now i don't run project cars 2 in a windowed mode i'm running it in full screen i've got texture resolution set to high the texture filtering i've got anti-astropic 16 times V-Sync I've got off just to reduce that latency. The MSAA I've got set to low. Post anti-aliasing is off and super sampling is off in this area because we're using VR. We set that up in the VR menu. These are two really report, uh, important ones. The reflections I've got set to high and the environment map set to high. If you don't set these higher above, the image looks terrible, you get ghosting on the cars, just doesn't look right. Now, as we are playing a racing game, we want the cars looking their very best. Obviously, it's a thing you're focusing on, and if you've got the horsepower in your machine, set this to ultra. You want the car details to look the very, very, very best that they can track detail you can i've got this set to high you can lower it to medium um it's obviously how many objects are placed around the track some of the uh say marshall some of the vehicles on track it is a performance hit uh you can lower it if you want to the pick through detail i've got set to player only shadow detail i've got set to low shadow detail is a massive impact on the game if I had a higher end GPU, obviously I've got an RTX 2080 Ti, I was flagship at the time, so not flagship anymore. Setting that up really high really knocks the frame rate down, so I've got that set to low. Enhanced mirror, no, we don't want that on. And if I scroll to the bottom, I am rendering two frames ahead. I've got detail grass set to low. Now, again, we're racing on track, we're looking for apexes. We're not looking to spot a bloody ladybird in the grass. But if you have that set to, um, I think it's below low or off, it looks like someone's done a real bad lawnmower job on the grass. So set to low does make grass look like grass. The particle level I've got set to low. 
this really can tax on performance I'd like it set a lot higher and although it's on set on low I've put the particle density to medium now in the HP Reverb G2 headset you can see uh, little rocks little stones little debris on the track and with the audio quality in the HP Reverb G2 I've actually hear them now hitting the car I'll come back to the audio in my narration in a bit moving on we've got the visual effects so post processing filters are off do not put them on it really makes project cars to look bad it doesn't look right exterior sun flare I've got set to none and interior sun flare I've got chroma on they are down to your taste they obviously can have a performance impact but set them how you want Bloom, I like Bloom, I absolutely think it's essential, it accentuates you know, the bright lights, uh, especially in uh, lower lights and that I think in this headset the colours and the colour reproduction, Bloom on is a must, Heat Haze I've got on, Exposure Conversation 1, Raindrops yes, uh, Crepixular Rays I've got on, Screen Dirt and Cockpit Mirrors. Now something else which is worth mentioning, uh, I normally play in the cockpit camera, you want to do that in VR because you want to be in within the car itself. I've currently got that to 72, the default is 70. If you set that to I think it was 82, you can really stop the flickering and that you can get inside of the cockpit. Um, I don't like it the field of view that zoomed in you're a bit too close to the wheel I like to be able to see the window screen my right hand window mirrors and then if I just have a quick glance over my left hand mirror obviously again that's personal choice to what you want right with the settings gone through I'm going to go into a quick uh, race at Fuji I'm just going to do the qualifying uh, pick the Fuji circuit. It's a track. I'm not really very familiar with so I did fly around Mount Fuji in Microsoft Flight Simulator And I thought it was a nice little tie-in with Project Cars 2 So let's get into qualifying and when I start the qualifying I'm just going to do some narration on my thoughts of how Project Cars 2 looks in VR. Okay, so where do we start? Nearly everyone watching this video is going to be interested in one thing. How do the graphics and the image look in the Reverb G2? Well, I have to be honest with you all, they certainly don't look anywhere near as good as this 4K mirror. Anyone expecting the Reverb G2 to deliver graphics on that level really needs to understand it's down to the game and the game engine and the hardware in your PC. So results will wildly vary between different systems. So when I started the hunt for the perfect settings, Project Cars 2, I'm going to be honest with you, look terrible in the Reverb G2. The higher resolution really accentuates poor image quality and it's taken a lot of trial and error to get a decent trade off with it looking acceptable and not killing the frame rate at that same time. And this is all while dealing with the real jankiness of the Reverb G2 software which I'm going to come to in a little bit later. So it is without a doubt this is the clearest I have ever seen Project Cars 2 in any VR headset. The resolution of the G2 really brings a hell of a lot more things into focus. I am noticing things around track and details on other cars that I have never seen or noticed before. It's quite a revelation. But that's not telling the whole story with this picture. Even with the Reverb G2, distant objects are still blurry, not clearly rendered, depending on the model and what textures are being used. For example, take the tower at the Fuji track that displays the car positions. I know what it is. We can clearly see it's the tower, but as I'm racing around the track, I am unable to clearly read the text of the car positions even if I look directly at it. 
Now that makes it seem that how far you can see into the distance is not that good. And that, to be fair, it's not true. With a Reverb G2, the viewing distance is so much further than other VR headsets that I've used. Take the 100 meter marker boards on the straight at Monza. As I'm approaching the signs, I can see every single sign in the track very clearly right down to the last 50 meter board as I'm approaching all four signs. But the caveat with this seems to depend on how much daylight there is available. The poorer the light conditions or how shaded the track is, the harder it is to make out the details in the distance. So lighting and shadows really play a big part in how the overall image looks in the Reverb G2. And this really depends on the time of day that you've configured to play. So differing light conditions really play that big part in the image. And perhaps the best analogy with this is to think that on a brightly lit day, a camera will be have brilliant brilliant crystal clear image qualities as you use the camera in lower light conditions you can get a grainy or not so clear effect and that's pretty much sort of how how the reverb g2 is sadly in the vr headset you will also experience shimmering and flickering on some of the objects in the distance on the outside edges of the track the far reaches and that's the point i'm really trying to get across to you guys that although this is the clearest i've ever seen project cars 2 it still very much looks like a vr image in the headset right then so what are the positives well even with the small sweet spot the image looks clear across the cockpit and one of the biggest improvements that I noticed were the mirrors. They no longer look fuzzy and you can clearly see the car, the colours, the detailings that's approaching you. The cockpit, the dials, the textures within the cockpit are very, very clear. And it makes it easy to monitor any of the car's readouts. Looking out of the windows into the apex and the track very near you, I have never noticed so much detail before. I can make out every type of kerb, the shape of the kerb, the track edging, even debris on track. The textures and details close up, I've got to say, really are clear. And when a car is very close to you, you can read even the smallest details down to the car badges, the number plates, car advert graphics, the wheel rotations and the suspension and how it moves under the cars is to be honest, quite hypnotic to watch as you're racing alongside each other. Watching another car's bright lights also looks stunning when close up. And I'm going to mention it again, the colour reproduction of the HP Reverb G2 panel really does surprise me. But it's only when other cars start to pull about, I don't know, one and maybe one and a half to two car lengths away that the details do start to drop off. I've also noticed as cars come into your professional vision from the side of you, the lenses can seem to cause a very small amount of ghosting for a split second, but I've got to be honest, it's not really a big issue. Well, with the positives, unfortunately, there are negatives. So what are the negatives? Well, the G2 weirdness. So far, it's taken nearly three days to produce this video. And I have never, ever swore at a VR headset before. And it does at times put me on the brink of feeling like selling the headset. Because at times, it's like pulling teeth working with the G2. Creating YouTube videos, creating content for you guys requires changing uh, a lot of settings, coming in and out of the simulator. And I've got to say, I've got to report to you guys, this has caused some weird issues. 
in all the times I've been playing Project Cars 2 in VR, I've never had the mouse working on the desktop screen, but the minute you put the VR headset on, the mouse doesn't work. I don't know why it's happening, something obviously to do with the Reverb G2, but it's really, really frustrating. At other times using the Reverb G2 headset with Project Cars 2, that doesn't happen. So it's not a consistent problem, but it's a problem I've been hitting. I've also noticed that sometimes when you start Project Cars 2 with the Reverb G2 and it's on one of its weirdness trips, your view and your glancing and looking around seems to be locked to the centre of the screen. And if you move forwards and backwards, the screen moves with you, same as the screen moving left and right. It's almost like the, the view is locked to your centre. Now when you're in car, if you want to glance over and look out the wing mirror, it's weird because you sort of don't really move anywhere. And I found that really, really frustrating. In recording these videos, the frame per seconds counter in Steam VR has never ever been an issue before for me on the mirror screen. With the Reverb G2, it inconsistently works and doesn't work as it feels like it. I've also had the orange banner from the Reverb G2 Windows Mixed Reality software coming up over the screen mirror uh, hiding the frame per second counter saying that if I want to push Windows and Y I can control the desktop another bug and quirk of the G2 VR headset so with these frame rate issues I've turned to the NVIDIA control panel like the shadow play and I've been using NVIDIA's frame per second counter and this brings me on to another massive point about the Reverb G2 it takes a hell of a machine to run it now I've got a 2080 Ti and in my settings when I'm just playing the game and not recording the game at the same time the frame rate hovers anywhere between low 60s to 80 frames per second but as you can see on screen while playing the game and recording this video with OBS studio it's tanked the frame rate to 45s or low 50s it took a massive performance hit to record the video and play the game at the same time now I am running the Ryzen 1700X, I am very well aware that it is a, an older CPU and it's always struggled with Project Cars 2 and the track and you don't get a consistent frame rate and I'm hoping that when I get my Ryzen 9 5900X the single core performance of that will eliminate that problem. But what it does scream out to me that even with an RTX 2080 Ti for content creators, you really need a more powerful GPU so that you can play the game at high frame rate and record the game at the same time. So the HP Reverb G2 really is a Marmite headset. On the one hand, the head mounted display is the clearest I've ever seen Project Cars 2. It's certainly going to give me a huge advantage in racing games. I'm not really experiencing any VR lag where I'd strain my eyes with the older headsets. But as a content creator, it's an absolute pain in the arse to work with. And really, what should have taken a couple of days tweaking the settings, filming, editing, and getting this video out to you guys has just taken so much longer because of the janky quirkiness of how just windows mixed reality integrates into everything else now for some of you that may not be an issue i haven't hit these issues every single time but certainly coming in and out swapping and changing as you do when you're recording videos i've certainly saw the darker side of the reverb g2 
much more than others may normally experience. So my current consensus with the Reverb G2 is I'm going to stick at it for the moment. I want to try a lot of my other racing games, get them dialed in and see how I feel how they work with those programs. And if it continues to be the pain in the arse it is, I'm even thinking towards swapping it out for the Quest 2, but I don't know about that yet. Anyway, I hope this video has been of a use to you, and I do hope that you're able to tweak your Project Cars 2 settings and get it looking as crisp as possible with this mini guide. Guys, thank you as ever for watching and subscribing. And now I've got this bloody video out of the way, I'm finally going to get to working on some more videos. Thanks for watching guys, as ever, peace out.